Okay. I'll start reading. Jacob, a slave of God and of the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Jacob is James. I guess that's what they call him in Hebrew. To the twelve tribes in diaspora. Shalom. Shalom means peace. Verse 2. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. This is totally from God. You guys been, you know, um, waiting on God, right? You guys been trying to seek God on your own? And uh, God is... Right? Just because you've been waiting on God three days, three nights in a row, and nothing happened, God's just testing your patience. How long will you be patiently waiting and, and, and spending time with God trying to meet Him? Okay, He's just testing your patience. It takes sometimes it takes months to meet God. It takes me two months. You know, and it took me some some other people one month, two months, you know, to receive gift of tongues. It takes patience and endurance. You must cut away all the worldly things off and be clean and holy during these times of seeking Him. Okay? So in this seeking, you must be holy as much as possible. Okay? As much as possible. If you fall into sin, you must repent. Every, t every day, right away. And ask for strength. Okay, verse 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, you're going to start being more in being able to be more enduring other things. When you wake up 3 in the morning, it really produces a lot of endurance and patience. You know, when you're not, you're not going to be as hot-tempered as before. You're not going to be as jumpy as before. You know, when you get this endurance by getting your faith tested in fiery trials okay when you're waking at 3 in the morning yeah you're tired you're really tired but you force yourself and it produces endurance okay when you just drink green tea or coffee or whatever to keep you awake you know really produces patience and endurance when you're waiting upon God and you're not you're trying to make yourself so silent before the Lord your thoughts everything silent it produces a lot of endurance a lot of uh, patience before him okay verse 4 and let endurance have its perfect work so that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing okay so let this endurance that you built up have its perfect work. When somebody gets you angry, just hold and don't don't get angry back. You know? Let let that so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If you get angry back at the person, then you're not perfect and complete. Okay? Verse 5. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all without hesitation. And without reproach, and it will be given to him. God gives wisdom to all. Without that means sinners, unbelievers, to all, without hesitation. He doesn't hesitate to give you wisdom. If you lack wisdom, continue ask, ask, and you're, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get more wisdom. So ask it right now. You know, Father, give us more wisdom, more wisdom in Jesus' name. Verse six, but. But let him ask in faith, without any doubting. So don't think like, oh, well, will I get, will I get uh, wisdom or not because I ask? Don't doubt. Okay? For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Okay, now uh, you might try to apply to this to other things. Like, oh, yeah, God's going to give me uh, my... BMW, my Lamborghini car, you know, you might be asking in faith, and I'm like, oh, I have faith, how come God didn't answer? God answers your prayers according to God's will, not your will. If you ask for wisdom, it is God's will for you to have wisdom. So, yeah, don't even doubt about it, because it's in the Bible. But is Lamborghini promise in the Bible? No, right? 
So you don't know whether that's God's will or not. So those things, you know, if you have not asked in God's will, God doesn't necessarily provide you with those things. All right? So ask according to His will and ask Him, is this your will for me to have this car? Is this your will for me to have this jet or this huge mansion? He might say no. You know? He might say yeah. We, we never know, right? So, uh, ask according to His will. And when you ask, do not have any doubt that He will answer according to His will. Alright, so you don't have to worry about it. The one who's answering is God, not you. So let Him answer. Okay? For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. You know, if you're always doubting whether God's going to give you the gift of tongues or not, you're going to give up. Oh, you're going to try again. Oh, give up. Try again. Give. Up. You know, you're going to be like tossed by the wind. Okay? Usually it's, it's bringing a lot of worries and uh, things of this nature, you know, doubting, you know. If God wills you to have the gift of tongues, yeah, you will. But you must might have to go through some testing period, some trial, some enduring period. You know? Go through it. Pass the test. Get your license. Right? Get it. God will approve you. When He approves you, He's gonna give. When He approves you. If you think you cannot control, if, you, if He thinks you might need more knowledge of the Bible, before you can have any control over it, he might not give you. Okay? Alright. Verse 7. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You're not going to be a stable person. Uh, if you stop, start to doubt whether, you know, God is a good God or is He not, you know, you're, you're going to be a double-minded man, unstable in his, all His ways. I was reading Bible yesterday about how God was very uh, cruel to the people of Israel, right? And the writer, Isaiah, is God, saying, God, why are you so cruel against us, you know? Why are you so harsh to us, Right? And you know what God's answer is? God's answer is, You know, you guys did not seek me, but I sought you. You guys did not look for me, I looked for you. And you guys still were rebellious against me when I came to you. So God chose the people of Israel, and it's not like the people of Israel looked for him. He looked for them. He, he took them in. Yet, they were still rebellious against Him. So God treated them harshly. You know, because they were so rebellious people. We cannot be rebellious. You know? If I say, Hey, you know, don't watch these movies. Don't watch these worldly. Don't, don't hear these worldly music. They mess with you. You know, and, and you go like, No, it doesn't. Why is it so bad? No, it doesn't then you're just being rebellious. You know, Bible says, do not love the things of this world. But if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. It clearly tells you that, right? But you go, you, you still go on, no, no, it's okay to love the world. It's okay to do all these worldly things. Then then what are you? You're just being rebellious against what, what has been written in God's word. And, and it's inspired by God. That means God spoke it. God says, hey, if you love the world, then you don't have any love of God. So, uh, that's what it is. But people are rebellious, and God's saying, okay, you know, you give me no choice but to let you be punished. So, that's, that's all it's about. Alright? Um, verse 9, But let the brother in humble circumstances boast, in his high position. Let the brother in humble circumstances boast in his high position. And the rich person in his humble position. Because like the flower of the grass, 
he will pass away. All the rich people, like a flower, the grass, next day, you know, is 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 no more. You know. Say what? It's hard to cut off the music stuff. It's hard to cut off the music stuff? Then ask God yeah. for wisdom. God, I need wisdom. I need strength to overcome these temptations to listen to this worldly music. Help me. Continue pray. If you have any problems with sin, with being indulging in the wickedness of this world, continue to pray. Father, please help me to get these addictions off me, this love for these things off me, Father, please. Help me, help me, help me. Get this lust off me. Get this addictions of games, music, TV, entertainment, internet away from me, Father. Away from my heart. Cleanse my heart every day. And God will give you power. Okay? Alright. Uh, so, it's saying the rich you know, person in his humble position. He's saying the rich people are actually in a humble position because they're going to be fading away. You know? Why would you have any boastful mind in the wealth of this world. Don't be, you know. But let the brother in humble circumstances boast in his high position. Okay. Verse 11. For the sun arises with a scorching heat and withers the grass, and its flower falls off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So, also the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will wither away. Rich man, you know, someday will be withered away. He might die. He might lose his wealth. Okay, all the beauty that he's been pursuing is going to be all gone away. No matter how much flowers you collect, okay, they're going to turn to dust and dirt one day. Just like the thing, people look for riches and wealth. Hey, it's going to be all turned to dust and dirt one day. It's a vain. It's a very vain thing, you know? All the nice clothing, nice things you, you like, it's all going to be turned to dirt one day and be destroyed. Okay? Verse 12. But who's happy? Happy is the one who endures testing. If you endure this testing, you're going to be happy because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord promised to those who love him. Not just love him casually, love him above all things. You know, love him number one, who places him number one in their life, not their wife, husband, money, things, jobs, but who puts God first, who seeks God first. Okay, he's going to give them the crown of life. Not everybody receives crown of life. Okay, those who overcome receives the crown of life. 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. And he himself tempts no one. Let nobody say when he's tempted, I am being tempted by God. No, God doesn't tempt you. The devil tempts you. Okay, your own greed tempts you. Okay, God cannot be tempted by evil, and He Himself tempts nobody. He doesn't tempt anybody. He tests people. Yeah, He tests whether they have endurances or not, but He does not tempt people. Tempter is a devil. Okay, so when you say, like, oh, somebody tempting you to some demons or devils, or somebody tempting you to be lustful in a way, Okay, it's not God. Okay, it's the devil. When somebody tempts you, oh, watch the porn. Okay, that's the devil. That's not God. God's not the one who's tempting you. But for verse 14, but each one, each of you, each me, you, you know, Marissa, Julio, Katrina, each one is tempted when he is dragged away and enticed by his own desire. So, your own desire tempts you. If you're falling to lust, for example, 
your desire is lust. Okay, that's what you want. And you're being tempted away by that. And the devil is putting temptation on you and you falling away. Yes, yeah, so you're like, oh, it agrees with my desire, so I fall away. Okay, verse 15. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, full grown, it brings forth death. So what is the result of uh, conceiving the sin over and over? When it's fully grown, you're going to die. Okay? It's not my words. It's the words of God. It brings forth death. You're going to die. You might not be in heaven, you know, if you didn't repent, not be, probably not in heaven. This is probably talking about when the sin is fully grown and you're just doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it again and again. You're going to be end up in hell, which is the second death. Either death, physically and spiritually. Verse 16. Do not be deceived, my dearly loved brethren. It's like, don't be deceived. Okay, just because, you know, you believe in Jesus and you can continue to sin, 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 sin. It means you're not going to die. No, you will die. Don't be deceived. Oh, well, I didn't die today. Well, don't be deceived. You know, you just don't die in one day. Okay, it takes time to be fully grown. It takes over and over, okay? Verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from, from above, from God. Okay? Then, then it must mean that every false gift, every, you know, fake one, every uh, evil gift is from the devil. Okay? So if the devil entices you with all the lust of the world, you know, whatever thing, you know, that's not from God. Right? Every good gift, every perfect gift is from God above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Okay? Now, for example, if God wants you to have a girlfriend, alright? Right? But... Uh, it's not your time yet because you're too young okay and then there's this hot girl all of a sudden starts talking to you starts giving you gifts and stuff starts showing interest in you you know that one is not from God because it's not your time yet to have a girlfriend all right that's from the devil to entice you into sin so that you may fall away from God because now you're drawing near to God. Devil is throwing everything he want, he can, on your lap and your face, to get you away from God, from seeking God. So you spend time with the girlfriend and lose the relationship with God. That's that's how the devil works. And if you think that's from God, you, you could be likely be deceived. All right. So when somebody all of a sudden God sends you a nice boyfriend nice looking girlfriend on in front of you and then the girlfriend says oh no no hey hang out with me hey, don't read the bible now go go hang out with me spend time with me don't you love me huh don't you love me you love bible more than me you know and you know entices a way to spend time with that person hey do you think that's from god or devil obviously every perfect gift is from devil. god yeah but everything that distracts you away from God is not of God okay when you're mature when it's time for you you can totally have control self-control over yourself self-control over your sin you know and God will give you the right one the right time okay you don't need to be crying about it right now you're too impatient be patient with him he's patient with you be patient with him just wait Okay, verse 18. By His will, He brought us forth by the word of truth so that we might be a kind of first fruits of all He created. Mm -hmm. So that he, you might be the first fruits of God, you know, God's harvest. So when, when uh, you know, when Katrina, like, you know, you're seeking God um, and all of a sudden a nice guy shows up, right? And entices you away. Um, watch out, you know. 
The devil might have sent him to take you away from God. He might even come out as a Christian. Okay, he's like, oh yeah, I go to church. You know? Well, uh, doesn't matter if they go to church or not. There are a lot of false Christians who don't follow after God. If he doesn't have a strong prayer life, if he does not have a strong, uh, strong Bible reading life, I cannot add. Uh, can you ask Marisa? Marisa, add add Shanish. Um, okay. yeah. um, if he don't, if he doesn't have a strong prayer life, strong Bible reading life, strong faith in God that he follows after him with all his heart, forget it. If the girl, again, is not following God, has no desire to seek Him, forget it. Okay? That's how you can tell whether you should be or should not be hanging out with this person or not. If they have no desire, and you talk about God, and they're like, hey, can you stop talking about God to me? You should not be hanging around this person. This person has zero desire for God. Zero. It's as useless as a person, as a worldly person is useless to you. You know, this person only going to distract you from away from God. He's just going to make you more worldly and has no value of things of God. You shouldn't be hanging out with these people because they will be tempting you away from God. And he doesn't. If they don't bring you closer, then stop hanging out with them. Okay? They have no desire. What can you do? Move away. When they have desire, yes. But if they don't, then what can you do? Move away. Quickly. Alright, verse 19. Quick to listen, slow to anger. Verse 19, Know this, my dearly loved brethren, let, let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For human anger doesn't produce the righteousness of God. So, what is it here? Be, rather be quick to listen and don't speak quickly. S and slow to anger. So everything is about being slowly, you know, controlling yourself. Rather listen and then be slow to speak and slow to anger. Don't be hasty. Oh, I need to tell you right now, right now, right now. No, just calm down. You know, you'll get your time to speak. Calm down. Slow to anger. This, this actually gets developed in waiting upon God. So uh, slow speaking, slow to anger part really gets developed on waiting upon the Lord because you're inclined to listen to the Holy Spirit when you're waiting upon God. You know, you're not trying to make your own thoughts. So that's why you're killing your thoughts while trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. It's better to kill your thoughts and to listen to the Holy Spirit than to be daydreaming all day long with your thoughts playing in your head. Okay? Verse 20. For human anger doesn't produce the righteousness of God. Just because you're getting angry at somebody, acting ungodly, does not produce the righteousness of God. So when you're telling somebody, hey, don't do that, and then that person continues, and then you go, don't do that, and you raise your voice, no, stop, don't do that, it doesn't produce righteousness of God. Okay, so, don't think it does, you know. Only when spoken by the Spirit of God, it will produce righteousness of God. And he, sometimes you speak the right thing, and they have no heart to listen to you anyway. They don't want to hear you. They don't want to think about the things that you, you're thinking, which is of God. So it, no matter what good word you throw, it's going to bounce back. Verse 21. So put away all moral filth and excess of evil and receive with humility the implanted word which is able to save your souls so rather than talking 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 and then showing all your evil and your immoral filth you know out of your heart through your mouth 
Rather, receive with humility the implanted word of God, which is able to save your souls. So rather read the Bible, hear the Bible, you know, okay? And make your heart be filled with the fruit of God, which is able to save your souls. So this, this reading of the word of God, meditating upon it, thinking about what God said, will enable you to save your souls. It will save you. That means it will take you to heaven. Verse 22. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deluding yourselves, de deceiving yourselves, okay? That's basically saying if you hear the word of God, you, you read the word of God, but don't put it into practice, then you're just deceiving yourself, right? Right? You understand? So if I tell you, hey, you know, turn off your TV, turn off your internet, read the Bible, and you hear it, and you go, like, okay, 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 and then you don't do it, you just deceived your own self. You just wasted somebody else's time, and you just deceived your own self by not doing what you heard. No point. Verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer, of the word and not a doer he is like a man who looks at him his natural face in the mirror for once he looks at himself and goes away he immediately forgets what sort of a person he was it's like you look into the mirror and you, you your face is kind of like you know has some dirt on it or something and then you're just going away and not doing anything about it and you forget how you had dirt on your face and you look funny you know you forgot about it totally that means you look ridiculous right so the same thing if you hear the word of God and don't do it don't put it into practice you're, the, you're a dummy who looks into the mirror and do not wipe your face <laughs> you don't even know your face is not clean yeah, so it's the same thing, you know, you, you listen to the Bible, you read the Bible, but you don't do what is written. You're just like a person who looks into the mirror and don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. If you look at the mirror, you should correct your face, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, verse 25. But the one who looks intently into the perfect Torah, Torah Bible, the Torah that gives freedom and continues in it, not becoming a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts. He shall be blessed in what he does. Okay? So the one who looks intently into the perfect Torah. What intently means focus on the Bible, pondering upon each word, looks carefully into the perfect Torah when he's looking for treasure okay the, the Bible that gives freedom and this person not only did it once but continues to do it every single day reads it carefully and continues in it not become a hearer who forgets but a doer who acts so when you're reading the Bible when it tells you don't do these things then don't do it Right? And you make up in your mind, okay, I'm no longer going to watch that evil movies. Oh, I'm no longer going to uh, listen to these worldly songs. Okay? Who intently, intently pays attention to what is written. This, you know, they will receive freedom and will become a doer who acts upon the word. And he shall be blessed in what he does. Not everybody. Those who do what is written will be blessed in what he does. You understand? If anyone thinks he is religious and yet does not brittle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is futile, is useless. You have done nothing if you think you're holy and religious, but do not correct your tongue from speaking any evil, 
and you're just deceiving your heart and your religion you're following God is, is being useless. 27. Pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Okay? The so pure and religion undefiled religion before our God and Father is this care for the people who lost their parents uh, who lost their husbands and wives right in their distress when they're stressful you care for them oh how are you feeling you know you know care for them and to keep oneself unstained by the world you know that's that's true religion so so when you when you're stained by the world that means you're in, indulging in the worldly entertainment, TV, music, sports, whatever it is, and you're being stained by the world. Okay? That's, that's not pure religion. Pure religion is to keep yourself unstained by the world. That means you're not partaking anything of the world. Okay? You say it's not affecting you. It is affecting you without you knowing. Oh, but music listened to is not affecting. It is affecting you. You ought to be unstained by it. You're stained by it. Without your notice, but your clothes are getting dirty. Your mind is getting influenced. Your heart is getting influenced without you knowing. Okay, so don't just open yourself to these things. And be a doer of the word. You, you saw it right here. And then you continue to not do it. Yeah, so you, you saw it and you hear it from here and then you, you don't do anything about it. Um, then just you're just being this deceiver. You're just being self-deceived. Alright. Uh, <clears throat> let's just pray and I'll upload it. I guess people got disconnected. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we come before you. Uh, help us to really be the doer of the word and staying away from the worldly things, staying away from the worldly music, the TV, the entertainment, the internet. Father, as much as possible, help us to be rather staying in your word in holiness. Father, help us to be taught by your Holy Spirit always and be led by your Spirit and let, it, let this word really change us in our lives, Father. And help us to endure the testing of our faith, the fiery trials that test us, that let us be able to produce patience and endurance by waiting upon you, by spending time to seek your face early in the morning, being patient and overcoming our own natural desires. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All right, well, uh, yeah, thanks for joining, guys. Uh, shiny shines one. <laughs>